Welcome back to Cooking for Fitness. I'm Andrew and I'm honored to be with my dad on today's episode where we're going to be doing fish tacos. Let's go ahead and get started. Hey! Thank you for subscribing and uh, hey we're going to make some good food today. We're going to go ahead and get started with the seasoning for our fish tacos. My dad's going to help us out with this one. So for this seasoning, um, there's actually a quick way you could shortcut this if you went ahead and got pre-marinated fish. But uh, today we're going to go ahead and get some nice salmon and uh, we've got uh, one tablespoon of uh, chili powder. We've got one tablespoon of salt. Uh, we've got a half a tablespoon of the Mrs. Dash table blend. That stuff is delicious. Uh, right over here we got a little bit of uh, white pepper, about a quarter of a, a quarter of a teaspoon. And uh, last but not least, a little bit of smoked paprika, a uh, quarter of a teaspoon. So I'm going to have Andrew mix that up together and put that on our fish. Alright, let's go ahead and get this mixed up and put on our fish. I mean, I usually use my fingers, but that's okay. Use a spoon. <laughs> well, you didn't prepare me for that. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so you want to lubricate that fish up a little bit, get some olive oil on there. That way the seasoning makes sure that it sticks to it. Probably blocking what you're doing. That's okay. We're it in. All right, there you go. So yeah, here we just want a nice light coat on that. We don't want overpowered uh, fish. That's uh, that's no good. Would you like to spray it so I don't grab it with my fishy hands? Sure. Look at that beautiful coverage. It's a nice piece of fish. This is a really nice piece of fish. You can get a lot like this in Alaska. I wouldn't know that. I would. <laughs> Fresh Alaska salmon. Doo -dah, doo -dah. Now that our fish is well covered and seasoned, we're just going to go ahead and put it on a piece of parchment paper in a little roasting pan and we're going to toss that in a 375 degree oven for, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes. You want to see nice browning on the outside and the inside needs to be nice and flaky. So let's pop that in the oven. Missed a spot. You did. You missed a spot. That's, that's going to be the spot on your taco. That's my taco. Next we're going to go ahead and get started with our creamy fish taco sauce, which is the best part of fish tacos, in my opinion. I and, agree. And he's also going to tell us our seasonings for the day. So we're going to start here. Everything's pretty much a half a teaspoon. So we're going to have a half a teaspoon of dill. We're going to have a half a teaspoon of the of the uh, oregano, half a teaspoon of salt. Uh, I use kosher salt. I like the texture of it a little bit better uh, versus iodized salt. Uh, right over here, we've got a half a teaspoon of chili powder. There it is going in. Uh, we have a half a teaspoon of coriander and a half a teaspoon of our cumin. So that's going to give it that kind of nice uh, uh, taste that we're looking for. We're going to mix those together. For the rest of this recipe, we're also going to use some ground pepper uh, to, to taste at some point. We're going to uh, use a quarter teaspoon of white vinegar. I know it doesn't look like there's much in there, just a little bit of, uh, just a splash of, uh, of, of that uh, vinegar. We're also going to use a half a cup of sour cream and a half a cup of mayonnaise. Also, uh, we have to. It's we're cooking. We're cooking tacos. We yeah. gotta have some lime. Tacos and lime. Tacos and lime go together. So does beer, but that's a different story. That, that's, that's a, a that's story. a different episode. A, yeah, next episode. That's not cooking for health. That's cooking for fun. So mental health's important too. Mental health's important <laughs> too. So for this recipe, um, you can either use a half a lime or you can use a full lime. You know, basically depending on how much you enjoy uh, lime is how much you should add. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, throw the rest of it in that bowl and mix away. That's the mayonnaise going in. Little secret as a kid, I hated mayonnaise. I hated sour cream. Now as an adult, 
We both? Yeah, well, I still don't need it straight. But they do make some really good aiolis. They do. They do indeed. Load up your... There we go. Let's get a little bit of that lime juice in there. Love the lime juice. You also get that vinegar and uh, just a couple, couple turns of our black pepper. Now the most important part of all cooking is tasting. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the one. See, that's the fish taco sauce I've been wanting to make. There we go. There it is. Excellent. So that's going to be ready to go. Uh, you can pop that in the fridge while we cook everything else up, and that'll uh, help meld those uh, flavors together. Nice tune. I like you it. like it? It's yeah. good. I thought the bowl was a little off, but you made it right. You made it work. There you go. Seal that top up, and we're going to pop that in the chill chest, aka refrigerator. Where you keep the beer for just uh, <laughs> just a bit. So as he's saying, uh, we're getting ready to start our vegetables for our tacos. So we're going to do red cabbage, green cabbage, red onion, tomatoes, and a little bit of lime for taste. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's do it. All right, so we're going to clear off this cutting board. We're going to cut one thing at a time here. Start with some cherry tomatoes. I don't know about anybody else. When I was young, my mom used to uh, cut big, big chunks of tomato. And uh, I actually didn't even enjoy eating tacos because it was just this uh, big chunks of tomato. In fact, I hated tomato. So. Uh, as soon as I learned how to use a knife and learn how to cook, uh, we started cooking, uh, we started cutting these things uh, kind of small. So I just take like grape tomatoes, I cut them in half, slice, and then we just uh, put them into some pieces there. That's it. And so you can see we're going to get a nice small dice. Almost done with the tomatoes here. You may not have to cook, cut this many tomatoes. It really depends on your love of tomatoes. Uh, in this household, there needs to be a, a three to one tomato to veggie ratio in all dishes because everybody loves tomatoes. Well, when I say everybody, I mean my wife and I. I'll eat the tomatoes. I told you they're healthy. <laughs> All right, let's get this onion sliced up. So when I cut onion, I usually cut that part off. Now I will tell you, as soon as you cut that part off, that's where all that scent is, that stuff that makes you cry. I'm just, you know, I'm like He-Man like that. Um, I, maybe I just enjoy the, the crying. And then I cut that in half. So we cut the, the top end, the bottom end, cut it in half. That way I get nice flat pieces. We want to go ahead and peel. Peel that part off. If you got a little weird spot, get rid of that too. There we go. Nice spot. I do the same thing to the other side. That way I can store it in my fridge. There we go. We'll just pop that off to the side because I won't need that. Now what I'm going to do to, to get a nice small dice on my, uh, my onion is I'm just going to start by cutting about a quarter of an inch, an eighth to a quarter of an inch. Uh, you know, cutting is Fun. It doesn't have to be precise. Uh, if you're breaking out a ruler to do this, you're doing it wrong. Uh, and then just we get these nice slices going in this he direction. He math. He knows the he knows the measurement already. Well, that's true. I guess I know how to eyeball it. If you need a ruler, you just want something small, right? Now that we've got our slices going this way, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice going in the other direction, and, uh, and that's going to get me this nice fine dice. It's okay if two-thirds of it falls on the floor. Um, I don't have animals to eat the onions, not that they would anyway, but uh, we have a mop. That's why I come home. Yeah. So we got, we got our nice fine uh, dice on our onions here. Let's get that on the plate. 
we're having so much fun doing all this other stuff, we may have forgotten to, to double check that our fish is done. It's starting to smell like it's done. I think it's getting close. It smells really good, actually. It smells delicious, but it looks really close. It looks close? It looks close. Well, let's, let's pull it out of that oven and take a look at it. It's kind of pink on the outside. Where is your piece? Oh, it's in the drawer. Oh, uh, yeah, it is this drawer. So we can check this bad boy out. Grab a fork. We just kind of want to see if it's going to pull away. It, pulling away, we're good. Hmm. Oh, that is delicious. Is so All right. So for these guys, I want a nice shred. I want really fine shreds here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of cut down on the top part. So you can see there's there's the end. Just going to cut down on the top part. Uh, I just need a wedge about that size. So the rest of this goes put away. I have this now. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just literally going to just slice it in uh, in small little small little pieces. So we're just kind of going up. If you notice, I'm using my finger to, to rest it on, but this part's curled so I don't accidentally cut myself. And we're just we're just kind of going up and down, just making really, really fine, small. If it takes you a little bit longer to do it, hey, that's okay. Food's worth waiting for, right? There we go. So now we've got this nice, really fine, fine uh, shreds of cabbage. Just going to put that over here on the plate. We're going to do the same thing to our green cabbage. So again, there's the end. I'm going to cut this top part off. You can also cut the bottom, the side parts off. In fact, I'll show you on that. Here we've got this little piece. And again, kind of getting it thing going up and down, keeping our digits away. There we go. Nice fine shred on our green cabbage. It's probably not enough, so I'm going to take another chunk. So what I'll do next is I'm going to set this down in this way, and I'm just going to take another chunk off there. Set that off to the side. So again, now we have this nice piece, and we're just going to go through the same same pattern. There we go. That's on the plate. So lastly, we're going to go ahead and cook up our shells. There's a couple ways you could do this. You could either steam them in the microwave, which I enjoy at times, but other times you can also fry them. I'm going to use yellow corn tortillas and we're going to fry them in canola oil, which is at 375 degrees. A little higher. If you got one of these handy things, that's the best way. It's an infrared thermometer. It can tell you exactly how how hot that temperature or that oil is going to be. If you don't have a, th a thermometer, you can always throw in um, when the oil's cold. You throw in a couple popcorn pieces of popcorn kernels, and when the popcorn pops, the oil's ready to rock. And you go ahead and just throw these in as they start crisping up. You go ahead and fold them up. Make sure you get both sides. And as one comes out, one goes in, and then you go ahead and put it onto this drip tank. Drip, drip hang. <laughs> drip hang. Put, put it onto the drip pan. Put drip it onto the drip hang. Go ahead and put it onto the drip pan so that the oil can kind of soak off of the, the uh, tortillas. Another good tip is to use cast iron here. So we're using our cast iron pan uh, because the cast iron is actually going to hold that heat in and really regulate that, that uh, oil temperature a little bit better than, uh, than you know, any kind of stainless steel or uh, especially, you, you probably don't want to do any of this in any kind of, uh, uh, what's that stuff, the uh, non-stick The non-stick yeah, is you not probably, good for this. probably want to avoid that. That's how you start tasting plastic in your food. And other chemicals. Another really cool chemicals, yeah. Yeah, that stuff, when it gets too hot, it uh, starts to give off gases. 
These shells aren't too crispy for y'all, right? They're they're a little crispy. Are they? Okay. We generally go with them a little softer, but uh, I, I can. But I can. no, that's fine. It's always good to have a range of crispiness. That way, everybody gets one that they like. That is true. Again, you got to cook for your audience. No, you got to cook for yourself first. Well, I'm normally an audience of one. Currently, there's an audience, so. <laughs> But yeah, so it's going to, the first ones are definitely going to be crispier because the oil is really hot. Now, as you're fishing these things in here, our oil is, is, is cooling down, um, so therefore it's not going to get as crispy as fast. Uh, so that's kind of nice because then our, our cooking gets a little bit slower. Which does definitely help because those, those first ones definitely were like, I'm done! Are you ready? Yeah, the first ones will go a little fast. The answer is nope, I wasn't ready. You can combat that by starting to fry those shells a little early. A little sooner, maybe when it gets to about 345 degrees. Or as soon as that popcorn pops. Our counters are clean, don't even worry about that. <laughs> well, I mean that's true, but... Uh... <laughs> I ran out of room. I don't want the oil to like saturate the non-cooked ones before they get cooked. And go ahead and make as many shells as you feel you need in this household while I'm here. We make the pack. <laughs> well, there's a little truth to that. <laughs> And as these get close to finishing, you can go ahead and make any rice, beans, any additional things that you'd like on the side with your tacos. Tonight we're going to be making rice and beans, but quick, fast, in the hurry, throw in the microwave, call it a day. If you live in Southern California, then you're blessed with having a, a million uh, uh, Hispanic restaurants and uh, grocery stores close by that uh, you can just go cheat and buy some really good stuff. We got really low. Uh, yeah, I could kind of tell. <laughs> kind of defeated the purpose. You were just you were just feeding them in. You were just like, let's run! Uh, they, someone's hungry. <laughs> Every so slightly. Is that healthy? Yeah, this is, this so frying, frying is not unhealthy. That's why you have to wait for the oil to get to temperature because at a certain temperature the food won't absorb the oil. It'll just cook it. That's why you that's the secret to why you actually have the heats. But yeah, so it's not unhealthy. It's not the healthiest version, but it's not unhealthy either. Well, you know, when it comes to those fats and oils, you just want to Limit. on top of the everything. You gotta put it on top of the fish. I like it on top of the fish. Some people put it on top of everything, but you gotta put it on top of the fish. That's how I like it. That's how I like it too. Then I choose to put the onion next. Oh, um, that's what you choose? Yep. Then I'll go 
How much fish did you put in yours? Did you put a lot? Did you leave it in a block or did you chop it up? You did an El Chapo on it. I kind of did a mix. Grab what looked good. Okay. And then I put the cabbage. Right, we get some of that sauce. Mm, there it is. There it is. There it is! Alright. All right. Then we said the onion, you said. That's how I like it. That's how you like it? I like it with the onion first, too. Alright, next. It's a little crisp. Dude, what about the tomato? I put that on top. You put that on top on top of everything. I do. I like to really taste that tomato. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Well, I'm going to give it a shot. <laughs> You're gonna like it. It's gonna be great. So. I think, yeah, it's gotta put the cheese next. Okay, so. And then the tomato. Let's see. Like that other fast food restaurant that shall not be we named. shall not be named. We shall not be named? That, that shall not be named. Did I say we? Okay. I Do I look it. French to you? Did I say we, we? I do not believe Alright! There it is. That's it? It's what about beautiful. salsa? Did you put any salsa? I did not. I did, actually, on that last oh. one. Put some salsa. I think I'm going to do it again. Okay. A little bit of salsa, a little bit of green salsa just bleep, on its side. Oops. Lost some tomatoes. Yes, that can happen. But I uh, I think it's oh. it's a risk worth taking. See, that's the I know, I tomatoes. know, but I think it's a risk worth taking. <sighs> now i got to. I gotta, because you know, of the scoop flavor. Scoop them up. Drop them on here. It's not conducive to eating. All right, you ready? No. I need a plate. I mean, you need a plate. This thing's my fall out. Things are gonna fall out. We gotta take it. Ting. Mmm. Mmm. That is one good fish taco. It doesn't get any better than that. No, it does it's not. Really awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and that's a wrap. Today, quick, easy fish tacos, a good sauce, great company, and I'd like to thank my dad for joining us in today's episode, and all the tips and tricks, this is the reason why I cook. Thank you all. Please like and subscribe. Definitely. Comment down below what you'd like to see next. I mean, after fish tacos, what else could you want? That's, that's a wrap. Welcome back to Cooking for Fitness. I'm Andrew. Today I'm here with my mother, my dad, right here. Here's the guy. What he says. Let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> Could use that. I'm this guy's dad. I created him.